Here on your election command center, opinion polls put the National Democratic Congress, John Dramani Mahama, in the lead with barely 33 days to election day, December 7. What are the key dynamics at play? We shall tell you and engage the polls on this matter here on your election command center specifically what went into this what are the major considerations for the for the persons who were surveyed and what really led to this particular conclusion and this is the latest global info analytics poll conducted between october 28th and november 2nd which is just some two days away as that's two days before today here on your election command center And, and with this polls uh, with, that we have been uh, also engaging uh, the Musa Dankwa of, on over the period, at least in the last eight months, we've been testing the polls of the Ghanaian voter ahead of election day, December 7, and clearly giving you an idea of what they're thinking, what the consideration of the voter is, what are the issues that would inform the voters' choice on who to vote for. And we've been consistent at this here on your election command center. And I always say this, that if, if, if you want to be convinced, don't, don't stick to one poll. So here's what I'm going to do tonight. We've combined the similarities and was the common denominators between the Global Info Analytics polls and then also the National Commission for Civic Education, the NCC polls, and then what came through, yes, that's sometime last week, Friday, that's the Afrobarometer survey as well. All those three have some common denominators, which we're going to be getting into here on Ghana tonight. But the latest coming through from Global Info Analytics, the survey that they conducted between October 28th and November 2nd, that's what you see right there. They said the question that was asked, if elections were held on November 2nd, this is it. The almost 10,000 respondents to this survey by Global Info Analytics indicated that if elections were held on 2nd November, 52.7 of them said they were going to vote for John Dramani Mahama. As against on the 26th of October, which was just about a week before that period, 53.3% of the respondents said they were going to vote for John Dramani Mahama. So if you do the comparative analysis, and that is the periodic base on base. You would see that John Mahama, based on the respondents' information, has lost just about 0.5% of, of the persons who said we're going to vote for him in the month of October, as against those who responded to the survey in the month of November. Now, for Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, he gained 1% of the persons who said they were going to vote for him if you compare those who said going to vote for him in, that's on the 26th of October, as against those who said they would vote for him on the 2nd of November when the survey was conducted. So from 40 to 41%, as against also John Dramani Mahama, who 53.3% now on the 2nd of November, just two days ago, those who responded to the survey said, you know what, they're going to vote for him. But then again, he still is in the lead. Now, this is clearly representative. You want to find out what's happening with the others as well. Alan Kojo Chemanting, Nanakwami Bediakon. Guess what? Based on the Global Info Analytics poll, consistently over the last four months at least, we've seen Nanakwami Bediakon consistently come through as the third force going into this election and also being trailed by Alan Kojo Chemanting. Does this really say that we're going to have a new third force, bearing in mind the fact that the third force in the 2020 election was the Ghana Union Movement, the GUM, as well. He is in this election as well, uh, going into the, the December 7, 2024 elections. Here are the key issues to the Ghanaian voter. Economy, jobs, education. It hasn't changed based on what we have uh, this survey from the Global Info Analytics. Second November survey, the key issues are still the same. Economy, jobs, education, roads, healthcare. Those are the five key issues. And this is where I, I bring you in to get a clear analysis of how these five key issues run through a number of the surveys that we are considering tonight. So bear in mind economy, jobs, education, roads, healthcare. And take a look at this. 
Global Info Analytics, the five key issues amongst the voters that they surveyed, economy, jobs, education, roads, healthcare. The NCCE, the five key issues, education, jobs, healthcare, roads, economy. The Afrobarometer survey, also unemployment, roads, health, education, economy. So you see in that, all these five top issues runs through three different surveys or polls conducted amongst different demographics across the various regions. Now that tells you a story. There was the next question that was asked, the direction of the country. Now, according to Global Info Analytics, as of the 2nd of November, those who responded, 65% of the respondents said that the country was headed in the wrong direction, as against 66 in October. The same question was asked Afrobarometer survey respondents. Afrobarometer survey respondents said 82% of them said the country was headed in the wrong direction. That's another question was asked of the Global Info Analytics respondents their economic condition of the voters as of today, as compared to last year. Guess what? 54% of, of them said their economic conditions were worse as a, compared to last year. Then the same question was asked by the Afrobarometer survey. And the respondents, 67% of them said that their personal living conditions was worse as compared to the previous year. That's against Global Info Analytics, 54% saying the economic conditions were worse. So you see that consistently we've seen that trend of a difference, even though there are different surveys and polls, the respondents are all telling the same story when it comes to the economic conditions being worse, when it comes to the direction of the country, and then also why they're going to vote for a particular candidate or not and the five key issues that they take into consideration. So we, we hit the streets um, for this evening and joining me right now. Let's do a quick conversation on this matter. I'm going to be joined in a bit by Musa Dankwa, the Executive Director of Global Info Analytics, and also Dr. Uh, Osai Kwapong, John Osai Kwapong, who is um, also a Democracy and Development Fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. They're the ones who also, uh, together with Afrobarometer, they conducted this Afrobarometer survey as well. But right now, Emmanuel Semani is going to be joining me in a bit with the People's Voice here on your election command center. Emmanuel Semani is at the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange right now. Semani, let's talk to the people around you. What are they telling you? Well, many thanks for your time, Alfred. Good evening and welcome to the People's Voice here on Ghana Tonight. And I am Emmanuel Samani. Now, according to major polls, there are three areas of interest where a lot of people think that would be a deciding factor coming into the elections. I'm talking about jobs, I'm talking about the economy and education. And so we are on the streets of Accra, particularly here at the Circle Overhead, to find out from people what they make of uh, which political parties can deliver when it comes to these three areas. So let's get some, uh, you know, insights into this particular, uh, you know. Now, Chief, when it comes to the, the matter of the economy, when it comes to jobs, and when it comes to education, which of the political parties here, I'm talking about the NDC and the MPP, which of them do you think will be able to deliver well or properly amongst these three areas? NDC. NDC for sure. Because um, when we cast our mind back, you know, the MPP, at first they were able um, to, you know, to, co to, 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 to complete their manifesto about this ed education, jobs and, you know, these things. Because when we look at Kufo, Kufo did a lot. Yeah, President Kufo, daddy, agree to you, daddy. He did a lot. And when we cast our mind to uh, Professor Moss, Daddy, I mean, he's so rest in perfect peace. He did a lot. Uh, when we cast our mind back to um, ex-president John Dramani Mahama, he too did a lot. But when we look to this, this future of our ways, you know, Nanado, Ghana trusted that Nanado is going to do a lot. But 
this man has defeated us. He has, you know, um, he has shamed us a lot because he has made us tough for nothing. Because when we see to education, this time around, see the score or see the results coming out from our brothers. Right. You know, it's not good. Okay. And when you see education, I've never witnessed in my entire life that, you know, education whereby someone will be going for three months and come back home for three months. And so, you know, parents it just, you know, let us be Ghanaians. Let us talk for the nation because we are going. Right. Let's think for the future because, see, when your, your world is too bad, coming home for three months is going to learn some immoral acts, something like this sexual and this bad I mean, like stealing and oh Charlie thank you so much me. thank you so much so let's let's get some more on this uh, I want to find out from you right so we're looking at three areas we're looking at jobs we're looking at the economy and we're looking at education who or which of the political parties do you think can deliver when it comes to maybe job creation for example do you think the NDC can you know create more jobs or the NDC? It's NDC because if you look some certain things you compare at first and you compare right now then this will help Ghana because if you look at first how things cost and if you look at first how these things cost I think the NDC will do the most I think the NDC will do the most. So, so, you, so you are talking in terms of the economy. How about in jobs creation and then education? The job is creation is change for economy. I don't know how to help people, but ask for me to help me because if you do change for work an hour, you think you will close so that someone also will come and do so everyone will get job to do. And if you come to the education, I heard they said if a uh, uh, university will be free i think for the first term right. and i think to help us because as for me i've complete uh, the essays last year i've not been able to go to the university so if it starts it can help me okay. for me to get the opportunity to go to university right. Right. thank you so much you're welcome All right. so there you have it the people's voice coming to you live from the overhead at Circle. Back to you in the studio, Alfred. Emmanuel Somani, thank you very much. And this is a people's voice and you have a say in what we say here on Ghana tonight. And so always, we will be in a community near you. So look out for us here on the Election Command Center. Joining me right now on Zoom, Dr. John Osai Kwapong is a Senior Development Democracy Fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD, also uh, Musa Dankwa, Executive Director of Global Info and Elections. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for, so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Yeah, good evening, Alfred, and thank you for having me. Great. Now, and, I, and I'll start off with you, uh, Mr. Dankwa, and clearly those five issues that um, runs through both yours and that of Glo uh, that's an Afrobarometer survey by the CDD, it's, it's clear, it's consistent o over time. And you don't see that changing in the next 33 days based on your own analysis and the interaction with, with the, the voters that you've been polling? No, Alfred, no. Um, I don't think so. I don't believe so. And I don't think it will change. We have had consistently economy, jobs, education at the top three since polling started in January 2022. And that hasn't changed. The remaining 33 days will not change anything with regards to the priority of voters. I see. And, and uh, Dr. Kwapong, uh, this is where as well for you, having monitored um, the conversation even before uh, Afrobarometer came in, these issues, economy, <laughs> still remains number one as you see that. And uh, you are in the United States. Uh, the economy is, is, is the biggest issue going into the elections, is it not? And we see that playing as well here in Ghana. Yes, and um, I'm also not, uh, I'm not surprised that issues of the economy, unemployment um, came in tops. Uh, if you look at the, if you've been following the Global Info Analytics Survey very closely, um, you'll notice that the economy and jobs have been um, in the, you know, in the top two, top three issues. Uh, if you look at Professor Smart Sapo's uh, baseline survey that came out in June, uh, economy jobs uh, were at the top. And I think it's, it's reflective of some of the um, 
economic challenges and pinch points that Ghanaians have felt, uh, and then some of the unemployment issues that uh, they have faced as well. So I'm not um, I'm not surprised that the economy and issues of unemployment uh, emerged as the top issue. Uh, if you look at Afrobarometer, um, it's been done ten times, um, and unemployment has come up. If you add the most recent one, unemployment has been the number one issue seven out of those ten times. Uh, so again, you can you can understand why those twin issues of the economy and the unemployment continues to dominate. Uh, the minds of Ghanaians in terms of what really matters in this election. I, I see. And interacting with the voters as you had them there live at the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange tonight clearly tells you, it, it confirms what we've been talking about. But you've been looking at the party's manifestos as well. Do, do they really respond to the demands and expectations and concerns of people on the matter of the economy and jobs? I would say so, right? So, for example, if you look at the uh, the NDC manifesto, for example, um, one of the key economic policies or ideas that they are uh, they are proposing to implement is the twenty four hour um, economy, um, and then there are other uh, proposals that deals with um, equipping, you know, the youth and other segments of the population with the kind of skills, job-related skills that may be needed to make them uh, more employable. Uh, if you look at the MPP manifesto as well, you see emphasis again on, um, you know, job training, um, equipping the youth, other segments of the population again with the necessary skills. Um, you know, it talks about, you know, different approaches to expanding various sectors of the economy with the hope that once those sectors of the economy grow, uh, that, you know, more jobs uh, will be created. So both parties are putting out ideas that they believe um, would help both the economy grow and by default then uh, create more uh, jobs as well. But with these ideas and with these proposals, uh, the key is always the successful implementation of them and the extent to which um, once you are able to successfully implement them, you get the intended results that you want. But And that, that is also, Mr. Dankwa as well, and, and I'll bring you in as well, but, but uh, Dr. Kwapong, there's also that element of trust, isn't it? So even before you get a chance to test whether they're going to execute them efficiently and effectively, the voters must trust who is saying they will do A, B, C, and D, right? That element of trust is crucial in this election, isn't it? Very key. Um, and if you look at the Afrobarometer uh, results, you actually find that the, whilst unemployment is the number one issue of concern, you would also notice that when it comes to the factors that would drive choice of presidential candidate, one of the top you know, reasons that emerged is the candidate's um, uh, trustworthiness and character, right? So you, in as much as you will, you are on the campaign trail pushing all kinds of ideas, at the end of the day, the voters have to also trust that this is the person I can believe can do this. Uh, for me. So beyond the soundness of the policy proposals and ideas, driving that would be the extent to which the Ghanaian voter trusts that this is the candidate who will be able to follow through. This is the candidate that I want to hedge my bets with um, when it comes to you know, improving the economy or creating more jobs. I see. Uh, Mr. Dankwa, and you, you, you put that specific question uh, to the people you polled, that who do they trust, right, to, as it were, deliver on the promises on the issues of economy and so on. What was the outcome? Right. Um, if you look at the, 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 the trust issue, in fact, we asked them, who they believe has the competence and the experience or to, 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 to take us out of this economic mess. Um, unfortunately, we have stopped asking this question in this round of polls, but in the past that we've been carrying out, the 
Mahama has always led all the pack when it comes to trust issues on the economy, trust to create more jobs, and trust to face the educational issue. Um, and that has been consistent from, I think, April 2024 until we ended this uh, round of polling in October. Uh, but this time around, we just focused on the main election outcome. And I think if you look at um, people, uh, uh, key issues and who they trust again, for example, if you ask people that, uh, what are your top issues, they mention economy. And then when you ask them who they're going to vote for, you can say that they are choosing John Mahama when it comes to those who say economy is a top issue. And then again, when you go to jobs, you ask them what are your top issues, they will say job. And then when you look at what uh, who they are voting for, you see most of them voting for Mahama. Likewise, on education. But on the education, the gap between Mahama and Baume is a bit closer because of uh, the credit that senior high school gives to uh, the MPP. Mm. I see. And, uh, and gentlemen, maybe this is to bo both of you, uh, Dr. Kwapong and, and also uh, Mr. Dankwa. When you look at the party's responses, and Dr. Kwapong, that's a quick one on this, the party's responses to, for instance, the Afrobarometer survey, they, they say that, well, these are just people's perceptions, and so it doesn't reflect their reality. So you hear government still talking about the number of jobs that have been created, yet unemployment is a big issue for the persons who, who were polled. Correct. Um, and so you, but you see, it's not just about people's perceptions. These are uh, based on you are polling people who are telling you about their lived experiences, uh, to use an Afrobarometer term. So these are their lived experiences. This is what they themselves have experienced. This is what their families have experienced, their friends, their neighbors, their co-workers, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, you may have created uh, or you may assert that you've created 2.6 million jobs, right? Um, but it could also mean that because the demand for jobs outpaces the supply, that 2.6 million supply, then you can understand why unemployment continues to remain the number one uh, issue on the minds um, of Ghanaians. And even when it is disaggregated, you see that those who fall within the age bracket of the youth um, unemployment continues to be their number one issue as per uh, round 10 of Afro barometer. So see, again, for me, these are things that, these are pinch points that people are, are feeling and are expressing them through um, a credible survey like the Afro barometer report. Uh, and Mr. Danko, I see you nodding in agreement to a number of the things that uh, uh, Dr. Kwapo is saying, is it consistent with what you also derived in your surveys or the polls that you conducted with these people on the matter of how the parties have been responding to the outcomes of the polls? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the uh, the youth in particular, I mean, job, job, job is their problem. Even their parents, even though the parents may be working, they are concerned that their kids are not working. Even the grandparents who are 65 are still concerned that their kids are not working. So. Perception, yes, for those who have already got the job, but there are people who also live or, or, or depend on them who have no jobs. So this is no mere uh, perception, but the reality of the people every day. If you look at the um, 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 top issues for voters, tell the younger people, it is job, not economy, for them, number one. And then maybe you have economy and then education. So if you disaggregate the data, you can see that the young people are more concerned about the jobs than the older population which is in line with what Afrobarometer Afro uh, found. And especially at a time in this country where we've had jobless growth before, so you'd understand why jobs is number one and less of the economy coming through. But gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Musa Dankwa, appreciate your time. As a director of Global Info Analytics, also to you, uh, Dr. Kwapong, appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, he is the a senior fellow Democracy and Development at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. Joining us from New York, Dr. John Osaikwapon, thank you so much. Musa, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you. This is Ghana Tonight.